Hey y'all, welcome to our student panel. So today you'll be able to ask us any and all questions you may have about UC Santa Cruz and we'll do our best to answer them based on our experiences as students here at UCSC. If you have a more particular question, feel free to join us for our office hours. They're actually happening right now. So you can go and start a Google mm -hmm. Hangout chat with the other orientation leaders and they'll do their best to help you in any way they can. Uh, before we get started answering y'all's questions, let us introduce ourselves. So my name is Deja, I use she, her, her pronouns. I'm a third year sociology and anthropology double major and Oaks College affiliate. I'm also a first generation college student. And so coming to college, I was like really nervous. I didn't really know what to expect. I didn't know who to turn to, but something that really helped me like calm down and find my community here was getting involved with Oaks College. So uh, my first year, I went to like a lot of the programs and starting my second year, I started working with the progress programs office um, at Oaks College. So if you have any questions about getting involved with your college affiliation, feel free to ask. Uh, hi, my name is Tristan. Uh, I'm actually a recent graduate from here. Yay! And so, um, so I graduated with uh, computer science, computer game design. Um, I'm affiliated with Oaks. I use he, they pronouns. Um, and I'm actually a transfer. So I came here from Petaluma um, and I transferred in from Santa Rosa Junior College where I got a degree in uh, 3D animation and 3D modeling. Uh, but while I was here, I was involved with a number of different organizations. So uh, I was involved with the Game Design and Art Collab, the Slug Anime and Manga Association, and uh, the Tabletop and Gaming Association. All right, hi all, my name is Angie. I'm a third year politics major. Um, I'm also first generation. I'm from Inglewood, California, down in um, SoCal, um, SoCal, so near LAX airport. Um, a few things is that I'm also involved in College 10 Senate here on campus. I'm affiliated with College 10, and I'm going to be doing research for the first time next year. So if you all have any questions about research, um, where to get started, where to look, who to ask, definitely like don't be afraid to reach out and ask questions, and we will do our best to answer them for you. Hi everyone, my name is Michelle, and I'm an incoming fourth year um, from College 9. My pronouns are she, her, hers, and my major is Business Management Economics, as well as psychology. Um, a couple of things I'm involved with on campus is the College 9 Senate, which is, is student government for College 9 specifically, and as well as Pop Rico, which is a K-pop dance team. Awesome, okay, so we're gonna get started with y'all's questions. And just so you know, we are gonna be looking up at a screen right above the camera that has like a rolling list of y'all's questions. So the first question is, when is Slug Course 2 due? And so that was actually due on July 14th. So that should have been submitted by now, but if you're getting like these phone calls and emails saying that you haven't completed it, uh, most likely the issue is that you haven't submitted your uh, course completion form, which is located on page 35 of course two. So uh, make sure you submit that and you'll know it's successfully submitted if you received an email with your responses to that form. Uh, if you're having troubles accessing a course completion form, there is some troubleshooting stuff on page 34. And also at this point, you probably would have received an email from us and that just lays out some more troubleshooting stuff uh, to try and get you to uh, see course, the course completion form. Yeah, and also just if you're still having problems with that still, please let us know. So right now we, um, you can let us know, send us an email, and then we can also help you walk, walk you through the steps. So the next question is, is it bad that I'm still undeclared? What if I want to change my major? So uh, first of all, it is definitely not bad if you're still undeclared. Uh, for a lot of profs coming in, they are undeclared, and now is a perfectly fine time to be undeclared. So basically, uh, right now, uh, you have the opportunity to sort of see what majors are on offer and see what kind of fits you the best. Um, if, you are like, if you are declared or if you're uh, proposed you, and you want to change your major, I would definitely recommend getting, con talk, getting in contact with your major advisor uh, for the ones that you are proposed for, if you are and for the one that you want to be a part of. So the next question is, where can I study on campus? Um, so luckily here on campus, we do have many spots you can go to. We have cafes here on campus. Um, personally for me, I like to go to the College 8 Cafe, which is in Rachel Carson College. Um, so they, that's one example. We also do have McHenry Library, which is one of the main li libraries here on campus. We also do have the Science and Engineering Library. Um, we call it SNE, so you might hear that around campus. It's located on Science Hill. 
Um, that's also another great place that students love to go on to study. And then also in McHenry, we do have the lawn and a lot of students like to go outside and like get blankets and take their readings out there and just do work out there. And then in each college, we do um, have like a little library that we call them. And it's just like a little study space that it's welcome to all college students, like any college student of affiliation. Like um, it's like a really cool place to go study. And then it's a really nice place to go hang out with your friends and just chill out there too. Yeah, another study space I really like is the computer labs. They're located all across campus. Um, some of them are 24 hour, like the one in Cal, as well as the one in Jay Baskin. So feel free to check those out if you want to like print something or you want to use the computers there. Um, the next question is, how can I balance school, work, extracurricular activities and a social life during my first year? This is actually a great question. <laughs> um, this is something I struggle with as a freshman um, during my first year um <laughs> so i was like a go-getter like i want to do everything join all the clubs but um definitely prioritize your academics first kind of like see how your classes are going and then you know go to the uh clubs that you're interested in and then like fill out that schedule also a good tip is to use a planning tool so either you know use a like a planner or use like google calendar and then you can put in all your assignments and exam dates that way you're not too overwhelmed by the schoolwork Okay, next question. Uh, it says, I'm shy. What are good ways to make friends? Okay, so coming into college, I was like really nervous about making friends and like not knowing anyone. Um, something that I did was really utilize Welcome Week. So during Welcome Week, there's lots of programs, some are mandatory, some are not mandatory. Um, I know Oaks College put on like movie nights and different game nights and things like that. So I really made sure to like attend those and just be like, hi, I'm Deja, um, and like get to know people um, that way. And I know my roommates and I, we walked around our dorm actually and like knocked on doors and just like, <laughs> hey, we live in this building as well, just wanted to get to know people. So um, I definitely recommend getting out of your box, like shell a little bit and um, just trying to meet friends. Yeah, and uh, for me, it was just a lot of uh, meeting the people in my major. Um, so a lot of my friends I met through there, but then aside from that, uh, the different clubs. So, I mean, it's a guarantee. The people in, in the clubs that you're interested in are going to be interested in the same stuff. Uh, so that's a pretty good place to make friends. Yeah. And then like Deja mentioned earlier, like definitely like take advantage of the floor programs your residential assistant might be putting on or your um, neighborhood assistant. Um, definitely take advantage of those because that's also a really great way to meet your neighbors. These are the people you're going to be living with for the next full year. Um, you can also, you know, start small, get to know your roommates. And then from there, like, again, classes are a really great way to do it. And then also activities and events that are put on by your college. Um, by the activities director there at your college, they could be putting on like college nights or even small little mixers that they do at the beginning of the school year. So definitely go to that. You never know, you can meet your future best friend there too. Okay. Um, so the next question is, how do I get to know my professors? Why should I? Well, it's, I think it's very important you should get to know your professors. You, so you can make connections with your professors. So once you start, thinking about grad school or even like a research opportunity. So I know I had to do that. Um, it's really nice to get to know them because they can give you letters of recommendations. And then if you have questions about, um, so personally for me, I'm a politics major. So I would, I talk to my professors and ask them like, hi, like I'm interested in like doing more like human rights, um, public policy work. Like what, what class would you recommend? Or do you know any other, programs or um, an office that they're looking for interns or anything like that. So they're a really great way to find connections, get connected to outside sources. Um, and then like, they're just a really great resource for you to utilize. And if you're struggling in class too, it's really great to let them know that you don't understand like a subject material that you're talking about. And then they can take the time and like break it down with you and like, let, like let, explain it all so you know what you're doing. <laughs> So the next question is, what is a discussion section and what happens during them? So a discussion section is like a supplemental instruction in addition to your classes. Some are mandatory, some are optional. Um, it is usually held by a teacher's assistant, usually either a graduate or someone who's taken that class uh, previously. And then the classrooms are usually smaller and then you can ask more individualized questions or um, if you need help explaining anything that you went over in lecture, you didn't get, um, they are a great help um, for me, I definitely went to a lot of my discussion sections and sometimes I learned even more like 
like more than like what I learned in lecture. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. So next question is, uh, what was your favorite non-major class? Mm -hmm. Okay. Um. So I would say, it. I mean, it became my double major. But, um, <laughs> there you go. You might find your double major, exactly. your minor through that too. Um, but into uh, introduction to cultural anthropology. Um, I actually took that last quarter, and it was really interesting. Um, I had never learned about different cultures in that way, um, and I loved it so much that I decided to declare a double major in anthropology. So. Uh, so for me, since I was a uh, transfer in computer science, computer game design, uh, there wasn't really too much time like to pick non-major classes, so a lot of my coursework was just for my major. Um, but from a lot of my friends, I heard that uh, theater classes, so even mm -hmm. friends who were in like computer science, they would pick theater classes just because the, the classes are so fun. Yeah, I actually, that's really funny because I took a theater class um, my first year. I actually ended up taking um, the Muppets Magic class, and it covers a GE, which is great. <laughs> so it does the IM, which is the Interpreting Media GE. Um, so it was a really fun class. I First off, I was like, I had never really like had much experience with the Muppets. Like I was like, oh, I want to learn more. And so it was really fun. It was like a really nice class to take, like a little de-stressor. Mm -hmm. So I was taking like my major class and then I had that class and I was mm -hmm. like, this is my fun class. Um, it's really fun. I would definitely recommend if you want, if you're interested. Um, again, it does cover a GE. So I would definitely take a look at that and you get to make a Muppet at the end of the final. And that's your final, making a Muppet. So who, <laughs> who doesn't want to make a friend in the Muppets? Um, my favorite non-major class would be um, a College 9 Global Action class, and there we talked about global issues, and then we also, like, raised money to, like, work on a project, and we got to, like, talk, it's, like, led by students, so our professor was the student, so I thought it was really cool, and another class I liked was my theater class, it's called Intro to Acting, Thea 20, mm -hmm. and then there we got to learn how to act. It was really mm -hmm. fun, and also is a, um, interpreting media GE. Uh, so, next question is, generally, what time of day are extracurriculars? Uh, so, I'd, I'd say that varies, depend on, like, uh, what the club organization, mm -hmm. the, or organization like, does. Mm -hmm. So, I know for uh, the uh, Game Design Art Collab, uh, we had those at night on Fridays, just because they, they want to stress, you know, uh, the, the classes you take, those come first. Uh, game Design it takes a lot of time, but the, your actual classes are more important. I know for another the other two class or the other two organizations I was in, uh, they kind of met in the middle of the day, but they met on Saturdays, so mm -hmm. you were guaranteed to not have classes. Mm -hmm. um, other clubs that I've heard of, they kind of do will do polling to try and yeah. see what the best time is for the different members. Yeah, that's a good one. Uh, so the next question is: When putting classes into your shopping cart, how many classes should we or can we put? Um, so for Frosh students and transfer students, I think you should have at least 15 units. So that's three classes in your cart. Um, within those three classes, um, we kind of mentioned a little bit is that you will have to enroll also in a discussion section, which is like a much smaller component, which is going to be led by a TA and it's going to be you with like maybe 20 or less mm -hmm. than that. Um, so it's, that's another thing. So please keep in mind when enrolling in your classes to also choose the section that also best fits with your schedule. Um, and so definitely recommended like 15 units with three classes again. Um, if you're having trouble, if you're not sure what classes to put, then definitely like um, you can explore the um, your major your major classes, your GEs again. Those are other great mm -hmm. ways, um, and you're also welcome to explore other majors. Again, you never know; you can find your double major, your minor through that way, just through experimenting and exploring. So that's a really fun option to do too. Mm -hmm. yeah. And um, just adding on to that, I would recommend to have some backup classes in your shopping cart, just in case um, like the three classes that you were thinking of do fill up. I know I like to have like a total of like six classes in my shopping cart, um, like so like two different possible schedules, um, just in case because during your enrollment time you never know if the classes you were hoping to get are gonna fill up. Oh, and another thing with that, you can also try using the my scheduler mm -hmm. um, feature in the in the enrollment portal. I think. Yeah, it's on your my UCSC. Um, yeah. In the tile, yeah. yeah. So then we also do have like a how-to video on how to use that one also. That's another great option to do, like what Deja was mentioning, having like backup classes so you can generate like your own schedules, um, like find one that 
you feel would work best for you personally since you know yourself um so definitely take advantage of that too that's a really good resource for classes yeah the orientation leaders worked really hard to um, <laughs> make the how-to videos so yeah. they are found on the UCSC orientation website and it tells you like a lot of different helpful tips on how to enroll and anything in between so the next question is how many GE credits do we need in order to graduate so there's a total of I think 12 GE. 12 GEs maybe 13 Something like that. Yeah. Um, <laughs> you can find it um, on the, the, if you like look up UCSC G, G, GE, which is general education um, requirements, it will tell you how many GEs you are and what the code and what category it's under. But some, most of them, it's like five units per GE, some are two. So it all depends on the GE category. So definitely look that up. Yeah. If you have any questions, feel free to email us or um, hang out, uh, use school hangouts and chat with us there as well. And if also if you're not sure how many GEs you're still missing yourself, you can also check that on your student portal. Um, on the homepage, you can go to My Academics, and then on the left-hand side, you can find, um, I think it is, it says My uh, Advisement Report, something along the lines yeah. of that. You can yeah. go on there, and then like you'll see a big drop-down menu. I recommend hitting the little Collapse All button, so that way it's easier to find what you're looking for. And then you can just scroll through the page and find the General Requirements tab, and then you can like see what you're missing and what you've satisfied, and that can help you also plan out your schedule. Mm -hmm. Awesome. So next question is, how do you get connected with orientation staff on Google Hangouts? Hey, great question. <laughs> so um, <laughs> you can go to your Gmail and um, you can click on like all the different Google apps and there will be like a Hangout tab um, and you can just click the Google Hangouts and then type in the email of your orientation team and you can start a chat that way. And we've also uh, sent you all emails about um, our Google Hangouts so you can go back and refer to that email as well. Uh, so the next question is, I would like to get a job or internship on campus. Is that something freshmen can do? Uh, how do I go about applying or finding openings? Uh, so on campus, we have something called the uh, Employee Request System, or ER. And uh, so that should be opening up for you uh, sometime before uh, classes start. Uh, it's basically just a way that uh, the different departments can request students. Uh, so you would just go on there, um, find, the, find the job that you might be interested in, and then apply for it. Uh, aside from that, there are, there are jobs that might be advertised um, outside of the ER, but that you would still go through the ER for. Um, but other than that, I think there's also the Career Center, which can help you out with um, internships too. Mm -hmm. yeah. So the next question is, how do you do a double major? How do you start planning for it? Um, this is really funny because I'm actually in the process of declaring a double major too. Um, so I personally, well, what you can normally start out is if you take a class and you really enjoy that class and you enjoy the major for it, you can definitely um, visit that website for the, the major website and then you can read through the course catalogs and then you can also find the advising reports that they have there. And then you can read through kind of like the requirements for the major, like how many lower division classes do you need or what are the prerequisites that you need to declare for the major. And then um, you can also go ahead and visit the, advise, um, the advisor for the major and then set up an appointment through them and then like they can help out they can help you out and like plan out how what to take when to take and so um, personally for me it's like because I'm a politics major and I'm trying to do a double major in Latin America and Latino studies um, I would just have to bring them my what I have so far what I've planned with my advisor and then I would also still have to speak to my own um, current major advisor and let them know that I want a double major because you do have to get their signature as well so you have to get the signature of your current major advisor and then the signature of the major advisor that you're trying to do as well okay the next question is I'll be affiliated with College 9, living on the I-floor. Has anyone had any experience with the I-floor either participating in the events or actually living there? What should I expect? So I actually never um, lived on the I-floor, but I am from College 9 and I had a multitude of friends who actually lived on the I-floor and really enjoyed it. So it's like half of it is um, people from, or students from the U.S. and half is international students. And then you live like on the floor and then they have a lot of events centered around international global perspectives so from my experience or from my friends um, experiences they have actually had a lot of fun and they got to meet a lot of new people so definitely recommend it <laughs> okay 
Okay, so next question, where do I find my orientation leader's email so I can use Google Hangout? <laughs> okay, um, so we've been sending all various emails, um, so I definitely advise checking your my, CSC, my UCSC email account. Um, I know we sent one giving you like um, kind of our bios and a little more about us, so um, that email will be a direct link to your orientation leader's team. Uh, next question. Are there any places to get food on campus really late at night? Uh, so we do have a few places on campus, uh, the dining halls, uh, and a few of them do cl uh, close late, so like around 11 o'clock. Mm -hmm. But um, if you want something at midnight or later, uh, by that time, old dining halls and old cafes on campus will be closed. Um, there is a program called Cookie Cruise oh, on yes. campus. <laughs> so, Cookie Cruise. Yeah, so you can like um, order cookies late at night and they'll like deliver them to you. And they're freshly made and yeah, so warm. <laughs> they're really good. Highly recommend. 10 um, out of 10. Yeah, and at College 910, there's like a little cafe called Terry Frito's. Oh, no. I don't know their exact hours, but I know they're open really late till at night. Yeah, until and, like, like 1 a.m. Yeah, and they have like little snacks and like ramen you can buy from mm -hmm. there. Um, so the next question is, when, when should we be applying for an on-campus job for work-study? Um, so as we mentioned kind of like a little bit earlier, um, you can apply to find work-study and non-work-study jobs using the employee request system. Um, right now, I think you might not have access to it because the school year still hasn't started just quite yet, but you can keep checking to make sure um, when you'll have access. But definitely use the employee request system. Um, that's a really great way to find those jobs. And then again, like people will be posting jobs, like advising, might need peer advisors or departments might need help or assistance. Um, but definitely as to when you should be, that's totally up to you. Just again, like when you come in this fall quarter, get a feel of it yourself. Mm -hmm. um, it really does depend on you and how comfortable you feel starting right away. I know um, I hold, I held off a little bit getting a job my fall quarter only because I was still scared and I was like trying to get accustomed to college life and my classes. But once you find your own rhythm, like definitely like I think you'll know when your time is. Yeah. And also along with that, um, I would basically say that uh, you need to make sure that you accept the work study first. So mm -hmm. it's going to be something you're going to find through financial aid uh, once that becomes available to you. Just make sure you accept that. And then once you've accepted it uh, through the ER, like we said, uh, you basically look under the uh, work study tab as opposed to the non work study one. Mm -hmm. And a lot of the jobs are going to be the same, but there might be some that are only offered for work study. Mm -hmm. um, the next question is Are there ever classes during the weekends? So, this is pretty rare. Um, most classes don't happen on the weekends, but I know for some classes, um, there has been like quizzes on the weekends, but it all depends on what class you're taking. So definitely look on the class search and under, like when you're during the first week of classes, they'll give you like syllabuses. They usually tell you then. Yeah. Um, adding on to that real fast, I took an online class recently last quarter. Um, so because it was an online class, we didn't really meet up in person. But um, if you if that's the case that you find yourself doing an online class, um, it then again like depending how you can. Um, schedule your time management with the work itself you might not have to do any work on the weekends but you might find yourself doing that um then they're also like if you do take a dance a dance class i know that through i think it's the lals department the latin american latino studies class that they offer a dance class like they might meet up on the weekends only for practice and that does count towards class time um so that might also be happening but again like you can definitely check in and like your professor will definitely let you know or your ta might let you know if anything changes okay next question what do you recommend to figure out what major is best for you okay um so coming in for me personally i didn't really know i came in as a psychology major um and so I would recommend just like testing things out. I know that's what I did. I thought I wanted psychology and then I like went on um, the major websites and was reading a little bit about sociology and was like, oh, like that seems interesting. Um, and so I took a class in psychology and sociology and realized that like sociology was more of what I wanted. So I definitely recommend like reading up on the different majors and if something like sparks your interest, try taking like the intro course to that and seeing if it's for you and then moving on to propose that major, um, if that's something you do like. Uh, next question. 
So it says, Tristan, I'm torn between <laughs> CS and CS game design majors. How do I decide? Mm. So that is a tough question. <laughs> I know from my experience, uh, looking at some of the, the curriculum for CS versus CS game design, there is a lot of overlap, but the difference comes in a lot of the um, major classes that are uh, considered more like um, the CGEs or um, the... Sorry, I can't remember. The some computer something electives, which are, are part of the CS game design curriculum. Um, basically, I would say if your interest is more in, um, in more in design, the design of game design, um, then CS game design might be more up your alley. Uh, if you're more interested in just general CS stuff, whether it's like applications, AI, or anything like that, uh, there it might be better to go CS. Uh, another thing is the potential workload. So uh, since there's less of a focus on just pure CS or even math classes, uh, you're probably going to see a few less of those just because less of them are required. Uh, so that could be something to consider. I know from a lot of my friends, uh, particularly in the arts, games, and playable media uh, major, they actually might have started in CS, gone to CS game design, and then realized what they wanted to do is art. So I'd, I'd say just sort of maybe start in CS, See if that's what's for you. Um, if not, they're similar enough that you can figure out uh, what if you want to be in game design or not. Uh, if you're not proposed, I would definitely recommend maybe checking out one of the lower division classes. See if that's what you like. Um, similarly to that, the next question is, for computer science game design, how are the classes laid out and how are they? Um, uh, so <laughs> yeah, so the, the, there is a curriculum, a curriculum you can follow. I know the one that I have is a little outdated now because they use, uh, what is that, uh, CMPS instead of CSE. Uh, so it's a, somewhat similar, but just the, the, the lettering is different. Yeah. Basically, uh, you'll find that there's like a lot of um, starting uh, programming classes. Um, then there's going to be some uh, foundational art, art, not art, foundational math classes. Um, and then there's going to be a lot of foundational like game design and uh, visual studies sort of stuff. Um, I believe we've dropped the the history of art and visual the history of art and visual cu culture component, but uh, you will still need to do some CGEs, uh, which the list has expanded more into uh, uh, computational media classes and a little bit less into uh, the math and CS classes. Okay, so next question is, how do we find out who our orientation leader team is? I have not received any emails from them. So we send out emails to both your UCSC email account as well as your personal email account. So just make sure to double check both of those. If you still can't find any emails from us, um, I would email orientation at ucsc.edu with your problem or call us. Um, our number is found on the UCSC orientation website and we can help you from there. Okay. Um if I don't feel ready for certain math classes of my major, is it okay to take a lower level prep course? Um, it definitely depends on your major, but if you don't feel like you're prepared um, for the class and you want to like take a lower level class just to like jog your memory on certain things, um, it's definitely possible. I'd recommend talking to your um, advisor and so you can plan out um, exactly what math classes you should take um, just so you stay on track with your major requirements. Uh, next question. I feel pretty overwhelmed with all the class choices. So is there a good way to pick out classes to, to take each quarter? Um, so I would say that the, probably the best way is to figure out a plan with your advisor. Um, so early on, if, if you're not entirely sure, uh, generally uh, for the first quarter at the very least, um, for Frost you're going to need your core course. Um, then there's, uh, you should probably take, we reckon like a GE and then something else. Um, that doesn't have to be major, it doesn't have to be GE. But then uh, later on, uh, since you're going to have the opportunity to talk to your advisor, uh, they'll help you, uh, your college or your major advisor, they'll help you figure out like what you might be interested in if you're not proposed, or if you're dead set on a certain major, they might be able to help you figure out, well, what classes could you need to take in order to uh, graduate. Yeah, and really fast to add on to that, you can find um, every year the 
advising office does put out a course highlights list mm -hmm. and so you can find that to help you out too it's a really great tool to help you navigate and look at all the classes that are being offered and if they offer GEs with those classes also and whether or not to check if they have a prerequisite or not you can find that information out if you just search up UCSC um, course highlights list advising mm -hmm. and then from there you have the option if you're a frosh then you would pick the one that says undergraduate frosh advising and then when you click on that page you can see um, there should be a bullet point list and on there there should say the course highlights you can click that one and if you're a transfer student if you want to also find that it's also made available to you too you can just also find the um, transfer student one which would be the undergraduate transfer student advising and then also go onto that page and see on the little bullet list um, course highlights list and you can find those classes available to you too. And if you are still feeling really overwhelmed with class choices you can attend our virtual advising days happening next week. You'll be receiving emails about that um, but you'll just be able to ask questions to an advisor and so they can kind of um, guide you within your enrollment. So the next question is, what can I bring to my dorm? Can we bring fridges, microwaves, or toaster? So definitely when you come to campus, um, you will be getting an email from your college, um, college affiliation housing office with your move-in date and everything. And then they'll, they should also be linking you to like this cool page that says what to bring and what not to bring when you're moving in. And then also the orientation office has their own how-to video on like mm -hmm. how to pack. <laughs> so yeah. please check out those resources for y'all. Um, we definitely did it. We will, from our own experience, we did tell y'all like, well, what do you, what makes you comfortable? If you want to bring your stuff, rabbit, like pet, like that sort of good stuff, then bring that. You know. Yeah. Um, so you want to like talk to your roommates on whether to bring a mini fridge or who wants to bring it and who wants to bring a microwave if you do want to. Uh, just make sure to don't bring a toaster that is not allowed. <laughs> no. Please don't do that. Or like hot plates, anything like that. Um, yeah. Oh, uh, also, uh, fans. So oh. <laughs> sometimes a year it's going to get hot. Uh, AC, not allowed. Fans, uh, definitely a fan. Yeah. Uh, you, you, you probably want like a small one uh, just because there are certain like limits. But I would definitely recommend a fan. Mm. They have like little clip-on ones that you can clip on, like if you're on the top bunk or on, like oh, your bunk really bed. Yeah. Those are those will save your life, <laughs> especially in the dorms. Because sometimes, like unfortunately, we don't have an air conditioning. We do have heaters when it gets really cold. Mm -hmm. But on those days that it gets really hot, those little fans do come in handy. Yeah. The next question is, what's the best advice someone had given you in your college career? Um, for me, it was probably utilizing my resources. Um, there's a lot of resources that UCSC has to offer, so you just have to like reach out to them. Um, also, during Welcome Week, your college guides will tell you a little bit about them, as well as your residential assistants and your neighborhood assistants are always there for you if you have any questions about any of them. Yeah, and then for me personally, I know my um, a really good one that I got was um, my first year I actually failed the class for the first time and so for me I was like I was a little shocked I was like this isn't what I'm used to especially in high school and high school is a very different atmosphere from college and you know it's okay if you fail a class like I know it's like at first you're not used to it and you're just like ah what is this what's happening <laughs> but just know it's okay every it go people it happens you know life happens um but just know that if you do fail a class like don't worry about it. like don't let it define you like it's mm -hmm. not it's not something you're going to carry with you like you know it's like it's a learning experience think about it like that like think about what you did and like what you can do next to help you out like definitely reach out for resources ask for help i know for me like asking for help was definitely a big game changer talk to your professors get to know them <laughs> your tas also and then like look reach out ask your residential assistants your neighborhood assistants and like let them know if you have trouble with anything like academic or personal life like so they can also help you out and point you in the right direction for resources too uh, for me, something that a lot of my teachers tell me uh, is basically, you know, look to your left, look to your right. Chances are those students are going to be employed in the industry you want to be in. So what I, what I take away from that is basically just networking. Get to know the different students because they might just be your opportunity to find out about like a research opportunity or to get a job or anything like that. And so advice... What I was given um, is that there's no stupid questions because mm, I definitely true. yeah <laughs> I definitely came in and I was like oh I don't want to like ask something and sound stupid or whatever or something like that and um, there really is no stupid questions because this is your education and if you don't understand something if you like want to clarify 
definitely ask, speak up, because um, you want to get the knowledge that this university is trying to provide you. So if you have a question, always ask it. Uh, okay, uh, <laughs> the next question is, how can I get involved on campus? Um, okay, so you can get involved either like by working on campus through like the ER system like we've said before, um, or you can just like attend the programs. Um, there's lots of programs and flyers and emails that we sent out and things like that. And attending the programs is a really good way to like network, like Christian was saying, um, and just learn more about different things that you may be interested in and then get involved by asking them the best way um, that you can like get involved in that club, like when the dates are and things like that. There's another big event during Welcome Week. Um, it's hosted by Athletics and Recreation, and it's called Cornucopia, which is a gathering of slugs. <laughs> and there are um, a lot of clubs table there, and then y'all can go check out each club and see what they're about. Um, but it's a great clubs are a great way to get involved in campus, and that's how I met a lot of my friends I have today. So definitely check that out. Uh, so the last question is, what are y'all's personal favorite general education classes you've taken? Uh, so, unfortunately, like I mentioned earlier, I haven't really taken any uh, GE classes. Well, for me, a lot of it was just, um, you know, uh, classes for my uh, major. I'm sure that, uh, considering how uh, general ed education works, I'm sure a lot of them fulfilled a number of those. But um, I would say, assuming that it was a GE, my favorite one was the uh, introduction to uh, sound for game design, which... It's, it's, it says this is uh, introduction for sound to game design, but it's really just introduction to sound design. Uh, and that let me know like whether or not sound, like, sound design as a title works for my workflow. As it turns out, it does not. But sound design is pretty fun. Yeah, and then in my own personal experience, I mentioned earlier I took a Muppets class, um, and that was a really fun class. And then I did another GE I did was for the science one, which is scientific inquiry. I took... Um, an introduction to astronomy, so it was like Astro One, which was the cosmos. I really loved that class, like it really motivated me and like I wanted to pursue more into the astrophysics realm, but unfortunately math is not my cup of tea, but there's a, like there's a lot of different like GEs of course, like out there, there's like fun classes like the Muppets class, I would recommend 10 out of 10. <laughs> Um, for me, um, I took Psych 1. It is for my major, but it's also a GE. Um, so it's like intro to psychology, and it's really fun. You get to learn about uh, a lot of basic psychology aspects, so like developmental, cognitive, and more. So really fun class. <laughs> Definitely recommend. Yeah, and a GE that I took that I really enjoyed was Sociology 1, like intro to sociology. And it was for my major as well. Um, but it was just really interesting because we learned to analyze society and how like society functions um, in a way that I had never like thought of before and we realized that like a lot of things that happen are like that can be tied back to like societal functions and things like that so it just made me look at the world in a whole different way so I highly recommend so unfortunately that is all the time we have today but if you have any questions that we didn't get to answer or you thought of more questions feel free to email us or check in our uh check out our virtual advice Check out our virtual <laughs> office hours, which are held weekdays, Monday through Friday, um, from 3 to 6 p.m. Um, a list of it will also be on the UCSC orientation website with available times. Also, next week, we're having virtual advising hours, so um, if you have any questions for advisors, um, they will be there to help you as well. Mm -hmm. um, if you haven't checked out the first panel, um, a recording was sent to you uh, via email, and then with the closed captioning as well, um, so you can view that as well. And if you like came in during like halfway through our panel, uh, we will be releasing a recording of this panel along with the closed captioning uh, very soon. So thank you all for tuning in. Bye! Bye.